We have a lot to talk about, and I'm very concerned. Let's get into it. In the end, you know, I think as a team, um, as a team, we have everything in front of us. We have the opportunities we want in front of us and about seizing that moment. Um, you know, nothing else really matters. Nothing else really matters. Not anything of the past. Um, not any record. <clears throat> not any um, past wins or losses. Um, it's a solid zero zero now. And um, the objective is a win. So, hey, if you're not my name is Keith, I do Black Quarterback Series. And today we have Week 18 finale and playoff predictions going into Super Wild Card Weekend. If you just want to hear Wild Card Weekend, I'm going to leave um, the timestamp there to where you can just go straight to Wild Card Weekend and you ain't got to hear all my extras. So, um, let's get into it. So, the first team we're going to talk about, uh, we're not talking about no games. We're just going to talk about playoff teams and some offseason stuff. And um, and we're going to get out of here. So, the Eagles. I'm very concerned with the Eagles for two reasons now. One, because of injury. And two, because just overall bad play. Um, I love me some Nick Sherriani. I think he's a great coach. But at some point, you got to take advantage or you got to take a hold of that locker room and um, get your, get it together. Like, we, you got to get it together. You can't keep trolling these, like, just war stories. Not war stories, but you can't keep troping this. We're going to get it done. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. And then you lose to the Giants. And now you now you have no home playoff games. Now you got to go on the road um, to Florida to play the Bucks, which I think you guys can get it done. But you should have never been in that position in the first place. Should have never been in that position in the first place. And I'm very scared that the fact that they might not even – they might get upset by the Bucks. Now, we'll get into more um, predictions later, but that's really all I have to say about the Eagles. I'm very concerned with the Eagles, one, because of injury, and two, just because their overall play has not been good, and their defense is terrible. So, uh, we'll see next week. So, Lamar Jackson set out this week because he clinched um, – they clinched everything and there was no need to play. And so I was going to come on here and I was going to say how Lamar should, should have played. They needed reps and blah, 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 right? Um, but I'm starting to come along with the fact that this team is different. This team is different. Um, the, the conditions in the bank last week were not good enough for him to be playing for absolutely no reason. Those conditions were terrible. It was rainy. It was slushy. It was, and it was a Pittsburgh, and it was Pittsburgh Steelers. So, I think um, him not playing was actually the right decision. But I'm still nervous um, that there's going to be rust in that first quarter. And even with the rust there, I don't want them to look up and be down 14 or 21 to start the game, and they have to come back and win because I, I think they can do it. That defense is spectacular, but. I don't want them to be in that situation um, in the second round. So, best decision, you kind of had no choice but to do it that way for Lamar's overall health. But um, that first quarter in a couple weeks is going to be really telling to, um, for the honestly, the rest of the season, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Lamar's MVP, regardless of what people think, Lamar's MVP. You can argue for Christian McCaffrey. I don't want to hear about Purdy at all. Um, but you can argue for Christian McCaffrey. But as far as as far as it all, Lamar's the MVP running away. And I'm, people are talking about it's going to be unanimous. I don't think it's going to be unanimous, but he's the MVP. Um, Justin Fields and, Russ, and uh, Russell Wilson. I put them two in the same bucket because they're kind of in the same situations, just different sides of their career. Justin Fields played decently this year, had a really good stretch. Um, I should have I should have wrote his numbers down at the end. But the last four or five games, Justin Fields really played well. The Bears as a whole played really, really well, like the last month and a half of the season. But at that point, it was already too late. And um, that might have been Justin Fields' last game uh, in Chicago. Now, I don't think it is because you're like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. If you take Caleb, you're essentially back in the same situation that you was in when you drafted Justin. But if you don't take Justin and you trade the first pick for all these assets, you might be able to build a great team around him. 
to be competitive. I don't think Justin will ever be Lamar. He can get to Jalen, but I don't think he'll ever be Lamar. Um, I think they should hire Greg Roman on that um, coaching. I don't know, not as an OC maybe, but I think Greg Roman will be really, really good at this because as a Bears organization, you're just trying to be relevant and not squander this opportunity because we'll be coming up, I think, what, year three or four? On Justin, and he's done this where he looks absolute trash at the beginning, and then y'all be like, "Oh, let's take advantage of his strength." And then at the end of the season, he looks good, and it just is a constant thing. So I think it's a high Greg Roman in some capacity to help him with their running game, and then when he gets to a point that where he's efficient enough in that running game, same thing they did with Lamar. Same thing they did with Lamar. I don't think Justin is the athlete or the special talent or the worker that Lamar is, but I think that he can get there and be a poor man's Lamar, right? Um, there's nothing about fields that doesn't look fixable. You know what I mean? So, um, and on the other side with Russell, um, Russell just needs a home to where he doesn't have to do everything. He doesn't have to be the focal point. Like he was in Seattle. He was never really the focal point in Seattle like that. Um, they always had a great defense and a good running game. So, not going to get me wrong, Russ was special. Russell Wilson is special, and he's a future Hall of Famer. But I think Russ needs to be put in situations like he was in Seattle to where he doesn't have to be the focal point. The, the, the focal point. And I think Pittsburgh will be a great place for him. We'll get more into that in the offseason. As we get into all the, uh, those types of things in the offseason. And so um, a couple breaking – um, breaking news things that I just caught as I was getting ready for this uh, video. Bob Myers is in for the Commanders, and Ron Rivera is out for the Commanders. I said earlier this season that without Cam Newton and Luke Kinkley, Ron Rivera is nothing, and I expect him to not be nothing. Look at his record when he had Cam, and look at what he did without Cam and Luke Kinkley. I don't think Ron Rivera is that good of a coach. Um, I think he had that great run with Cam the one year, and after that, injuries and just, to me, bad coaching. So he deserved to be kicked out. I think he would be good, a good college coach. I think his message um, would be good as a college coach. I think he, he can get his point more across as a college coach. Um, Bob Myers, I don't think that – I think that's going to be a disaster. Dealing with NBA players is different than dealing with NFL players. Um I don't think it's going to be good. I don't know why you hire an NBA guy to do NFL stuff. The cap is different. The culture is different. What fans expect is different. So um, I think it's going to be a disaster, and I expect uh, Washington to have the number one pick next year, and they're going to mess it up as the commanders normally do. Now they have new ownership, so who knows? It might be different, but time will tell. Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys took advantage of their opportunities. They took advantage of their opportunities. They took advantage of the fact that the Eagles fell completely off the face of the earth. And now you have a home playoff game, and now the whole NFC is in trouble. I'm not going to pick Dallas to get to the Super Bowl until they get the NFC Championship game. If Dallas gets to the NFC Championship game, I'll pick them to make the Super Bowl. Maybe. So, But Dallas, I'm not surprised. Dallas is doing what they're supposed to do. Dallas is doing exactly what they're supposed to do. And um, congratulations to them. And uh, we'll see. But they're also paying Green Bay in the playoffs. And Green Bay has never been the great of a, that great of a matchup for Dallas. You know, the the, the catch. The that catch wasn't that wasn't a catch. And, you know, all the other craziness that's happened to Dallas and Packers. So, um, it's going to be interesting. I'll give, you my, I'll give you guys my prediction at the end. Um, Kansas City plays um, Miami on Peacock. I'm very upset about the fact that this game is on Peacock and they're pressing the streaming service that don't nobody want. Nobody wants to watch because we're on a slippery slope right now. You're putting football behind a paywall? That's normally not how football goes. Normally, football is the free thing that you can be, watch on national TV. Now, you can get NFL Red Zone and you can get all these things to enhance your viewing experience of football better but when you start putting football behind a paywall, it gets really, really grainy. Now, I know this is where we're going um, as far as this, but I just don't like it. I just don't like it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. 
um, you force some people to buy a streaming service. You force some people to buy a streaming service that they don't like nor want. Because essentially, you're forcing people to pay what, like ten dollars maybe, just to watch one football game. Unless you're getting a free trial, and within that case, I guess. But I, I just, I'm just not a big fan of it. Not, a, not a big fan of it. Um, and so I should have said this as I was talking about Dallas and um, the Packers. But Jordan Love. Is making the playoffs in his first season um, as a full-time starter. He was 4,159 passing yards, 32 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He tied, I think, Kurt Warner and somebody else. Uh, CBS Sports tweeted it. I'll put it up on the screen to where uh, he had a good season. And I didn't think he had that good of a season, but he's in the conversation with some of the best to do it. So you got to say he had a good season. Um, it was very up and down. Sometimes you're like, okay, I see it. And then sometimes you're like, oh, Jesus. So I don't know if they found their guy, but they definitely found their bridge. They definitely found their bridge. If, jo- if Jordan Love is their guy, you're talking about 30 years of football excellence. And that's crazy. That doesn't normally happen in any sport. You get a LeBron James, he retires. You're going to be awful forever. Like, I mean, we're not going to talk about them today, but – What's going on in New England? You get a guy for 20 years, and then after he leaves, the whole thing falls apart. So congratulations to Jordan Love. I give you guys my, like I said, I give you guys my prediction um, at the end. Um, I'm so happy for Jordan Love. Good to see we got another guy that we're going to be following uh, possibly for the next decade. Josh Allen makes the playoffs and in the weirdest way. You got all of Josh Allen yesterday. Just you have to go watch the highlights to get the full effect, but you got all of Josh yesterday. He was like, wait, okay, great. Oh, my God, why Josh? Oh, 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 just I hate to even agree with Nick Wright, but Josh Allen is such a roller coaster that it is just like watching him is an experience in his own. It's like I said, like he's Cam Newton Jr. He just makes, to me, he makes a little more mistakes than Cam will make. But um, watching Josh Allen is definitely a football experience, so. Shout out to them. Nobody thought they was going to make the playoffs in October, but they put themselves up and they did it. They got some luck. They got some people to lose, but they were able to make the playoffs, so shout out to them. Bryce Young and David Tepper. Oh, my God. Where do do I begin? First of all, Cam should be the president. If Cam wants to take on that dumpster fire, he should definitely take on that dumpster fire. Who better to make um, Carolina better than the guy that made Carolina relevant for my generation? I think he should give it a try. He can't do no worse. He legit can't do no worse than everybody else there. They should look into hiring Cam. You might be able to get him for a discount because he just wants to do it. Um, I'm so sick of David Tepper. Like, you throwing drinks on people. You just firing coaches after one year. You're forcing people to take players that they don't really want to take. Like, it's just bad management all around. It is absolute hell in um, Carolina right now. so And Bryce Young is a product of it. Bryce Young had a bad season. Um, he had a bad season by all accounts, but when you're dealing with an unstable organization and an emotional owner, this is kind of the things that happen. We don't know if Bryce Young is good or not. You can say Bryce Young is not good, but what did he have to work with? I, I think that if you swap Bryce Young and uh, CJ Stroud, you swap them, I think you get the same results. I think C.J. Stroud looks really, really bad, and I think Bryce Young looks really, really good with Tank Dell, Nico Collins, and all them guys. Um, it's just a bad, bad situation, and I was hoping Bryce could come into a better situation than he is, especially as a smaller guy, because um, I don't know if you guys watched um, Hard Knocks. They had a camera on um, – what's his name? They had a camera on Tua's, Tua's helmet, and you could see what Tua's seeing. I have a whole new profound respect for shorter quarterbacks because the fact you can't see anything and you made it to this level is like a blessing in itself. And that shows supreme intelligence. So um, not going to talk about Seattle. Don't really have time to talk, talk Seattle right now. We're going to get into that in the off season. So for my NFL predictions, my NFL predictions, we got Houston, Cleveland, Kansas City, Miami. It's on Peacock. You can't watch it nowhere else but on the Peacock streaming service. That's an important. That's important because people are going to be looking for the game, and it's not on regular TV. It's going to be on Peacock. 
Um, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay, Philly, Detroit Rams, Dallas, and Green Bay. So we're going to start with Houston and Cleveland. I think that Cleveland defense is going to it's going to absolutely destroy Houston. I think Houston is going to have a terrible game. I think it's I think it's going to be like two interceptions, um, and it's going to be over for most of the game, but then Houston's going to try to make a comeback, but I think their comeback is going to fall short. I got Cleveland 25-18. Um, Kansas City, Miami, um, it depends on what Kansas City we get. Do we get the defensive juggernaut? And the making plays on um, just making plays on offense, Kansas City, or do we get the inept um, Pat running for his life offense and can't nobody catch anything? And so I think if Miami can score 30, and that's a tall task, but it's Miami. If Miami can score 30 on Kansas City's great top five defense, I think they can beat them. But I got to go with the um, proven commodities. I think KC gets it done, and I think Miami struggles to even put up 20. Um, so I got KC. Buffalo, Pittsburgh. Every part of my being wants to pick Buffalo, but I can't doubt Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin has been MacGyvering this thing for almost a decade. So I got Pittsburgh in a relatively easy win, um, probably win 20 to 10. Josh Allen does Josh Allen things and throws eight, four interceptions and fumbles the ball twice. It's just, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a good look. It's gonna be a rough end to a season. Tampa Bay Philly. I have Philly. I'm picking Philly, but I would not be surprised if Tampa Bay ran it up because you see what they just did. Tampa Bay scored nine points against Carolina. If you can't hold Philly, if Philly can't hold Tampa Bay to nine points. They need to. They need to blow it up. So I'm going. I'm. I'm picking Philly, knowing full well that Philly might wet the bed. So I'm going with Philly, and probably a relatively unnecessarily close one. Detroit and the Rams. The Rams are returned. The script writers couldn't do no better than this game here. Detroit in their first playoff game in like over ten thousand years is hosting Matt Stafford who played for them for a decade or so. Um, it's going to be a special It's gonna be a special game. It's going to be very emotional. Um, but I don't think it's going to be close. I think Detroit runs away with this one 30 to 15. Um, and then the final game of the, of the, um, of the wild card weekend, Dallas Green Bay. I, don't th- I think this is over from the word go. I think Dallas gets up 21 in the first half, and I don't think it's ever close. Um, so I got Dallas in a blow in a blow away game. I think CD has two touchdowns. Probably goes for over 150. Um, and and people talked Monday should have should Lamar really have been the MVP? I mean, look what Dak just did against Green Bay. I think that's going to be the sentiment. Um, and so yeah, Browns, KC, Pittsburgh, Philly, Detroit, Dallas in a blowout. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, I know it's a longer video. Um, I had a lot to talk about. I had a lot to get out. And I'll talk to you guys later. Enjoy the games and stay warm. Stay safe. I'll talk to you guys next week. Peace.